Welcome to the first episode of MuseCast. I'm Kat. And I'm Tori. And today we are joined by our good friend, Joe Kirk. Hello, everybody. Yay, thank you for being in the studio. Thank you guys for having me. All right, Joe, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Joe Kirk. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. I'm 22 years old, and I'm a musician, singer, songwriter, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and you were on The Voice, correct? I was. I was on The Voice uh, season seven in 2014, and I was on Team Adam. Wow, Team Adam. <laughs> I would have picked Team Adam, too, if I yeah. was, if I had the ability to sing. I would have picked him. I've heard you sing. You can sing. I have not heard you sing yet. I can't sing. He's lying. <laughs> okay. So what um, what got you into music in the first place? Uh, first time I performed, I was four years old, and I sang Happy Birthday, Jesus, in a Christmas play. And it was in front of my entire church, and I just knew that I wanted to do that forever. So I kept singing as much as I could in different like groups at school and uh, my mom was a, a vocalist, a front man at a band, for a band in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina at a resort, and I got up on stage with her. We soon after that moved to Nashville, and I decided it's what I want to do with my life. So I just have been pursuing it ever since. It runs in the family, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> runs in the blood. <laughs> Definitely. Very musical family. My brothers are in a pop duo. Uh, my sister is the best singer of us all, but she is a stay-at-home mom. That's been her dream ever since. I can remember. Uh, my mom and dad both sing, and then there's me. I sing as well. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so you grew up singing. So what made you decide to take singing as the next step as your career instead of just, you know, getting a nine to five job like the rest of us? <laughs> what made you want to do singing as your career? Honestly, I want to change the world um, through my lyrics and through my story, and I just kind of want to make music that feels like home for people and uh I, I went to a lot of different schools growing up and my family is incredible but there's no but to that my family is incredible um kids in school however like it's hard to find friends when you when you move around a lot and so music was always home for me and and if I tried to do anything else I'd feel lost and and like I was wasting my time wow just kind of passionate about it and I, I, I've always said I didn't choose music uh, I would I would probably have ran far from it if I chose it because it's a very hard career to break into uh, but music chose me it, it, it kind of saved my life and therefore I, I have an attachment to it and a passion for it so absolutely Hello. beautiful <laughs> so beautiful I could cry um okay so we already said you were on the voice yeah. but I've always had this question I've never asked you no. What made you pick The Voice as the show that you wanted to break into the music industry with? Good question. And there's actually a, uh, a solid answer to that. I, of course, was a fan of every reality TV competition just because I love watching talented people succeed. Even if it's on like a minor stage or a major, major stage, I just love seeing people like being able to enjoy the five minutes that they're on that stage. So um, I was like, oh, I want to do that one day. Then the voice came uh, to television, and I, I genuinely like it was different because at, at the time, at 17 years old, although I loved to write, uh, songwriting was not my priority. It was not my main focus. Being a vocalist was, and it was really about just the voice. It was, it, I can be crafted as a songwriter. I can be helped out. People can, blah 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 blah. blah. Um, but it was really just about the voice and, and about the vocal technique and, and the tone and everything that I've always put so much work and effort into. Um, and and I didn't really want it to be about my look. I didn't want it to be about my story. I didn't want it to be about anything but, honestly, the art form of being a vocalist at, at that time in my life. So that's why. It was just focused around what I loved to do. That's a really good answer, actually. You never really think about it because all the other shows, they give the same opportunity and it's people who have amazing voices, but the voice is solely based off of your voice and your talent. And there's no impression that right. could ruin you. They don't know what you look like. They don't know how tall you are. They don't know sometimes if you're a girl or a boy, honestly, like some, some voices are so unique. And, and I think that it just gives every vocalist a fair shot, no matter your age, your ethnicity, um, your genre it's all about just vocal technique and 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 talent and inability and i feel like that is what sets the voice apart from every other 
competition is it's really focused around what really matters and that's the hard work ethic that you put into becoming a vocalist and showcasing that for the world yeah it's it's so true and uh he was a special case in the voice too you don't see a lot of four chair turnarounds <laughs> i was very 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 blessed and super surprised um honestly i i can't even explain the feeling that i i was feeling in that moment <laughs> That's insane. You always watch the voice, and then when you see, like, you can see their faces as people are turning around or not turning around, and it's, it, you can tell it's making or breaking their performance or whatever. But when you see, when I watched your your audition, like, your face when they all were turning around, you were just, like, kept going, your family it's screaming. Like, and It's like, keep your, keep your cool. Composure, <laughs> yeah. And it was really hard because, like, I've always looked up to Adam Levine as a vocalist. He's He's always been completely different and, and and very unique and you hear one word and you know oh that's that's either maroon five or adam levine whichever project he's working on because he's a genius and works twice as hard um but also gwen stefani has one of the most beautiful smiles i've ever seen and then at 17 i was like hi hello <laughs> um and also like pharrell is is an incredible producer an incredible artist and then that was right around when happy um was released and and he he was just an icon he still is and, and then blake uh, of course is from nashville which is where i'm from and i don't know he, i've i've always written even even at that stage in my life when i wasn't like a writer i didn't claim to be a songwriter I've, i had always written songs with storylines or or uh, really meaningful lyrics and and that's something that a lot of his songs showcase so it was really hard for me to pick but ever since the show started um, Adam has always had a harsher critique in a, in a, in a more professional approach. Not that the others aren't professional, but when I look at Adam and, and when he turns his chair around, he truly believes that you have potential and it's, it's not ever just because, or yeah, maybe it, it's always, all right, you've got it. Let's, let's work on that. And that's why I picked Adam is just cause he's always about your growth and, and, your experience as an artist being the best it can be. I'll shut up now. No, we <laughs> we're on a podcast. We're here to talk. <laughs> we're here to talk. This is what we're here to do. Um, no, another thing I also noticed watching The Voice this season is he does not turn around easily at all. No. No, he literally wants a challenge and he wants to hear it. If he doesn't 100% fall in love with The Voice, he does not turn around. Yeah, and that's why, like, I, I if you watch... <laughs> Don't go do this. If you watch my battle round at the end of my battle round, I got super, super emotional. And everybody's like, why did you cry? Well, um, <laughs> plenty of reasons. But the number one reason was because at 17 years old, I had to go back to senior year in high school. Uh, I was really working for, I was really looking forward to working on my career full time and not having to do that. <laughs> Um, but having to take a step back from the reality of every day pursuing music and every day growing as an artist, that was the hardest part for me. But I wasn't upset that I lost because Alessandra was amazing. She's still incredible. I still keep in touch with her. And uh, just to be able to be on that team and, and to be on the show in general, it, it, it was enough validation for me to keep going and, and realize I can do it. Um, and I... and here's a secret for your podcast uh i that was not the first time i auditioned for the voice i had auditioned once before when i was 15 and i did not make it and i worked for two years and tried out again and i was on the show and from there i took a lot of step back i took a lot of steps back actually and i started writing and really focusing on that craft because I no longer just wanted to be a vocalist. I wanted to have something to say. Uh, I had some labels approach me and, and talk to me about singing their songs, singing their lyrics, crafting me, changing my haircut, changing my style, uh, changing my whole approach. And I'm like, here's the thing about art. If I don't see success while I'm on this earth, that's fine. But if my art ever sees success, if it's 500 years from now, it's going to be mine. I want I want it to be my my words. I want it to be my vulnerability. I want it to be my melodies. I want it to be me because that is... That I'm, every artist is the face, the name, the brand, the brain power behind their own art. And there's a specific integrity that every artist holds for themselves and their art of, I've got to do this so the world knows who I am. I'm not just this fabricated 
um, carbon copy of what the industry wants me to be. I am someone with my own words, my own my own story, my own challenges, and and uh, I just want to I, I want to make sure that I I stay true and I, and I set an example for every artist who's been told you won't make it as you are. Stay true to who you are because art is more important than any amount of money or any amount of success or selling out arenas because when it's your art and and you get a dm or or message or or a comment it's like this song saved my life or this helped me through a hard time it's so much more important than it is to sell out the arenas i really hope i'm blessed enough to sell out arenas but my number one focus is to be able to change somebody's life even if it's only one person and then I feel like the only way that I can do that and feel like I was the one who did it, which it's not a it's not a really about me me doing it, but uh I can only connect with you if I've been through a similar type of good time or bad time or similar type of experience and, and if you come and meet me at a meet and greet or at a concert or I'm at the mall and you run into me, I want you to be able to talk to me about your experience and, and I relate to you on some type of level in the words be mine and I and I I'm able to share my experience with you as well you know what I mean absolutely I think that's a really good thought process to have especially with the music industry we have now it's like it tears artists apart and it makes them go crazy because they can't be themselves and they have to be told what to do and I feel like um I, I talked to Kat about this a lot it, it, it's such a social media game and it plays a huge part and I, I understandably so but at some point like you got to look yourself in the mirror and it's like what's more important being genuine or being number one and um i believe that being genuine will lead you to the number one spot if you stay dedicated and don't lose hope um but to me it's always just be genuine and, and be kind and and tell your story as best as you know how and set an example for future generations absolutely and i think it's really uh important too because there are a lot of artists who are in your situation they're independent and they want to make it but they'd also do anything to get to the top including not be true to themselves and not write their own music and wear what they're told to wear or sing what they're told to sing and just just to have the name out there and the success and i think that's something that's super unique and special about you is that you're not willing to sacrifice who you are just to see fame and success because it's not about that to you. I, I would love to sell out arenas and, and there's some things I'll bend and break on. Like any career that you have, um, you're scheduling or you're going to have a dress code. Um, but I, I just feel like art can't be dictated. When it comes to my lyrics and my melodies, um, those those are the things that I'm not going to fabricate or, or, or let become just a carbon copy or something somebody else wants me to say because it's it's like you going into an interview every single song that i release is like an interview to to enter somebody's life and be a part of their story and 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 be able to captivate them for three minutes and 30 seconds or 17 minutes if that's however long a song is and, and really just be a part of their life for that amount of time it's an interview to be their friend that you may never meet and and i want to make sure that the integrity of my art is is always the truest and the, and the most important because I feel like if you hear my songs, the ones I've released uh, to date and, and the ones I wrote that you'll never hear, you could hear where I was at in life. And, and I feel like that is the only way I'm going to have be able to have a one-on-one -on -one connection even if I have tens of millions of followers. You will be able to connect with me in some way because they're my words and, and you know that. Uh, life wasn't always the Instagram perfect picture that you see. It wasn't always great. Um, and that's okay. Because as an artist, what I want to make sure that everybody understands is that you're going to be okay. Like, just stay true to yourself, believe in yourself, and don't give up. And and I, I don't know what else to say other than when I won my Grammy. It's because of every single one of you listeners and you too. And it's, it's, it's not me it, it's i was able to become vulnerable enough to share my heart on paper and and put it in a song and you guys believed in it enough to help me out and and it doesn't matter how much success i see or don't see i I'll, I do it for the same reason and that's why i've continued i don't i don't mind being independent i don't mind not having all the fame and fortune or or being the 
top tier of the artist and A-list celebrity. I don't, I don't really mind all of that. I hope that happens one day just so I can travel the world and meet everybody. But um, at the end of the day, if five people hear my art and five people love it, they're part of my family, and that's what's most important. Okay, so we have quite a few fan questions. Yeah. I tweeted out to your fans, and we got so much response. Wow, let's do it. Um, we're going to do a speed round. Dream and collaborations. Dream collaborations. Uh, three. Can I have three of them? Yep. Ariana Grande, uh, Tori Kelly, and Drake. Ooh, those are really good ones. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Tori Kelly is my number one. I, I feel like her lyricism is very true to who she is, and I feel like her voice is, uh, like, uh, you can't compare it to anybody. She's amazing. Wow. I'm also impressed. Beyonce. Also <laughs> Beyonce, because I just feel like she's just incredible. Okay, I'm done. Musical inspirations. My brother, Steven. Um, he is... That was very bad. He is my biggest inspiration, my biggest mentor, and, and uh, the man I've always strived to be. Okay, so a few friends were naming out their locations. We have Belfast, we have India. So the question is, where is your dream tour destination and are you planning to tour soon? Um, my dream tour destination is anywhere that somebody will hear me. Um, I, I, I don't care if it's in front of five people or not. I don't, it can be in the smallest venue, in the smallest place in any country. Um, if, if you're coming to share time and, and energy and, and music with me, I want to be there. Uh, so wherever you guys are is where I want to be. Your favorite word that inspires you. She gave the example of growth. Oh, um, favorite word that inspires yeah, me? Word. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> persistence. Ooh, that's a good one. Thank you. I, I think that being persistent is most important in all things in life, especially a career field like mine. So persistence. I think you embody that, too. I appreciate you. Thank you. The scariest part of being vulnerable in your music. Um... Excuse me, this is a complicated answer. It'll take me 30 seconds. Um, the most the most stressful part of being vulnerable in a song is someone misinterpreting my words. Um, I feel like the larger I get, the more is susceptible the word when you can receive something. Yeah. The more susceptible I am to somebody not resonating with my lyrics and really taking them to heart in a wrong way. Um, and, and I haven't really released any songs like that. Um, you've heard some songs, Let the Games Begin, and... and, and Songs like that will either people will either love or they'll be like, "Wow, this is like really cocky or really arrogant." And and um, that that's my biggest fear is that people misinterpret me as a person and me as an artist. What can we see next for you? What's coming up next? All right, I have a lot of plans, but um, I'm uh, it takes time to get all of them in in to work. So what what we can expect next is I have a single coming out um, April twenty sixth. It is m unlike anything I've ever done. I, um, I'll be releasing videos and singles and hopefully an album next year. And that's all I can speak on. What's the single called? A uh, thing called love. Where can we find it? Everywhere when it comes out. <laughs> Everywhere you want. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, at Joe Kirk Music, and uh, keep up with my journey and become part of the family. Well, we definitely will. Thank you so Thank much you for, for being on our show Thank today. Yay! Thank you guys. <laughs> Thank you guys. Well, you know what? I'll be. I'll definitely be back. Thank, Thank you guys for tuning in.